Welcome to Retro Bassin and welcome back to the FATC St. Augustine show. In addition to just sort of checking out the different displays, trying to interview some collectors and also find some old school gold, I did have one actual deliverable that I wanted to accomplish at this show. This past week, I was lucky enough to sit down with Buddy Perrin, the son of George Perrin, who of course founded Plastic Research and Development, aka Rebel Lures, in 1962. I had a blast hanging out with Buddy, hearing all these stories from the early days of the Rebel Lure Company. And at the end of our interview, he walked me over to his father, George Perrin's Rebel Tackle Box. Inside were just... <laughs> some pretty wild lures and Buddy blew me away when he gave me a handful of them to take home. Well, needless to say, these are some rebels that I will be collecting, not casting, and I was trying to figure out a proper way to ensure that these guys are preserved as best as possible. So, lucky enough, I'm here standing in front of Arthur and Karen Edwards' display and they make a number of custom lore boxes for lore collectors. Retro bassin' kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. All right, Arthur, how you doing? Good, Good. to see you back at this show. So, tell me a little bit about what y'all do with these boxes. Do you guys make these boxes? We do, we okay. do. Yeah, we, we make the boxes, and uh, of course, we make them for ourselves too, for our collections. But uh, we sell we sell the boxes or, or trade them for lures and so forth and um, and uh, me and Karen do it in our own shop at our own time. This, this is a hobby, pretty much supporting another hobby. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> know the feeling. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. So for folks who don't really know about sort of what. I guess, you know, societies like the FATC and mm -hmm. NFLCC do. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about just what is this box and what's the purpose of it? Well, this is a, um, our, our typical shadow type box. This is a 20 by 27 made out of oak. And of course, we, we put a, a backing in it that you can pin your lures in. So you can lay your lures in there and use these T-pins to, to put them in the boxes. And if you can look back there or on here you can see how they're pinned in and that's how that's how they they stay stationary did so, you all make this box we did Ooh, yes yes that's a 16 sided case holy and, cow uh, yes and then i like this one this looks like some sort of traveling salesman yeah case. we call that our suitcase because you can't actually fold it up and um and, and it hooks all all together and then that way you can transport and then if you want to display your lures at the show you can kind of set it up like the big cases there behind you or on the side there and of course this one's made out of cedar and um but that's that's the the, the concept on that one <laughs> now as far as sort of how to display do you guys have any recommendations because people who are you know what kind of lures can you display What's the best way to display them? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Just how do you do it? You just put them in there and pin them in? You do. Um, you know, you, you've got the, the line ties and, of course, the hook, the the, the, light, the, the um, hardware that holds the hooks on. And that's where you stick your pins in. And um, if you if you, you slide your, your, your pins in sideways, they're ni nice and tight. And then um, and do, and do the hooks also the same way. And then they stay in there. So that's a good way to do it. Um, so how many shows a year do y'all do? We are probably we do this, we do this show. This is the St. Augustine show. Um, we do we have a Savannah show now, and it's combined with the Florida and the Carolina Club, which is a great little show. Um, we do our national show, which will be in Springfield, Illinois, this year. Um, um, we do Pigeon Forge, the Milwaukee show, and then a couple of the Carolina shows. All right, I see some tackle boxes. I need to see these. Yes. Tell me about this. Okay, these are, 
This is kind of one of our new ventures. We're starting to make some tackle boxes now. Um, this particular particular wood is um, lace wood and butternut, and it has uh, the lid opens up. You have storage inside, and they're all handmade. Me and Karen make them. Um, it, the tray comes out. You can slide it back and forth where you can put, you know, reels in this section or whatever. Oh, it's even stamped, isn't it? Yes, and we do we do put our name in, handcrafted by our Karen and Arthur Edwards. Y'all have a Facebook page or, or anything? Like if anybody wants to find you, just have to go to one of the shows and hope you're there? You do. We don't do Facebook. I'm sorry. We're kind of old school. <laughs> But we're at the shows most of the time, um, and word of mouth is kind of how we get get our product out there. So, and, uh, I love the case. I'm going to pick up one. So yeah, I picked up some lures this week that I need to display. So okay, well great. Before the end of the day, I'm gonna I'm gonna be grabbing one. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, we appreciate it. <laughs> so these are the lures that I picked up this week, mm -hmm. thanks to Buddy Perrin, who's the son of, of George Perrin. So these came from George Perrin's actual tackle box. Wow. His old Rebel tackle box. So these are some some very old school Rebel lures that I, I'm not going to fish. So what would be a good okay. good box for those? I think I hopefully hook, didn't hook them in too bad. All right. Well, let's see if we can get them halfway unhooked. <laughs> That's always the fun part. It is always the fun part. Not getting your fingers stuck there. Yeah, so it looks like there's about four humpies and two minnows in there. Mm -hmm. uh, come on. And what we can do is kind of halfway spread them out. Let's see. Let's try. So you think he may be in. Let's just try this. We can lay them in. Well, so right, you've already done better than I would do because I would have just put them in uh, not at an angle, and that looks a lot better than I would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> could do something like so. And I wonder if I should leave room for like a rebel patch in the middle or something. Well, huh? you could do that. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I need to find a rebel patch here. That's right. Let me go this way. And then maybe or down here. Something of that arrangement. I mean, you would kind of have to play with it. I don't know how big your patch is going to be. Yeah, where you could put two and two, huh? Yeah, two humpies and two. Yeah. And, and then maybe or something of that nature. And then the patch here. And you close it down. That's probably about the right size case. Okay. I'm, you know, but that'd be up to you. And then, of course, like I said, when you pin them in, you just use the, the pins in the eye in the eye here, your line tie. I put one down here, and I always put one in the middles, you know, of the lures if possible. And then another little thing here is what we call a U pin. And you kind of put those those U pins over the hook. Could you show me how to put one in? I'll take Absolutely. this case. Absolutely, yeah. And we'll at least play with that minnows. Those All right, are... and if I can get the thing open. I think that's the right size, though? Sir? You think that's the right size? I think size? so. No, the only other size case bigger than I got would be this so you... one, the 12 by 18, which you could spread them out a lot more. Now, the smaller one would be too small, though, you think, right? That, that one? You did have one down. Yes. Now, this one. This is a 12 by 18. So that that one there is going to be too little. That'll be too because they'll, they'll yeah. So yeah. this is the one. Yeah. Nah, this is the one. This is perfect. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do that. But we'll take a pin here. And Karen always puts extras in here. <laughs> it's a hundred in here. She's probably got 105. So we're not robbing nobody. But we can stick it here like so, and then of course do another one here, and then you can use these U-pins, I can get the box open here, just bear with me, and see these U-pins are like jewelry pin, jewel, jeweler's pins. And then you would just stick those like so and so and so and that holds that sucker in place. You see the idea? And you can kind of, if you kind of 
I always like to put my hooks back a little bit, you know, it just makes it look a little better. So about how many pins per lure? Um, I would go one, two, three, four, and then these. So I know that sounds like a lot of lures. Seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But so that way, when you pick it up, it's not that the hook's not going to hit up against the lure and scratch it up and do damage to it. Yeah. And so forth. That's the kind of idea. Because some of these lures can 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 be a a pricey thing, you know, and you want to protect your investment. <laughs> so. Fishing it old school. This old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.